Hey, this is Connor with Congruent X, and today we're going to be talking about array data in Power Automate. Today, I'm going to show you how to trigger a child flow with an array parameter and then send an array back to the parent. So here's our parent flow. One precursor to this, you can only trigger a child flow from flows that are within the same solution. So you cannot use this outside of a solution. Right now, we're just manually triggering this flow and we have a list rows step. This is just gonna pull in the first five rows in my accounts table. In our child flow, our trigger is the same manually trigger a flow step but I've added a string input and I've just named it array. And below we have the compose action just as a placeholder so I can save the flow. So let's trigger our child flow and send this response from the account table to our child flow. I'm gonna look for run child flow. So I'm gonna select my child flow here and now we see our input parameter of the array shows up. Now I'm going to look for the value response from our list rows step. Now watch what happens if I try to save this. It says update the child flow for action run a child flow to end with a response action. And all this means is the parent flow needs a response from the child flow. For now we're going to use the respond to a power app or flow step. I'm going to name it status and put in success. After I've saved my child flow I should be good to go on my parent flow. So now you can see our flow ran successfully. You can see the inputs it passed to our child flow. Here's our array response. You could get an error here saying you're trying to pass in an array value. In that case, all you'll need to do is wrap this value in a string function. And this will work the same. So let's go to our child flow and see what that looks like. You can see our outputs. We have our array value. You can see our compose step ran and we're responding to our parent flow. Let's see what happens if we try to reference this input array. So you can see all I can really reference from that input is the array value itself. I can't access any of the data within that array. So what we have to do is parse that JSON response we sent. So let's open one of our previous runs and I'm just gonna copy the JSON response. Now I'm gonna look for parse JSON. I'm gonna point the content of the parse JSON step to our array input. And for our schema, I'm gonna generate this from our output we just copied. I'll paste that in here, click done. It does a pretty good job of generating the schema for this response. So let's save our child flow and run it again. So you can see our step succeeded and it's gonna look exactly the same as our input. However, now we can actually access the elements within our response. You can see email address, name, website URL, all this other data that's getting passed in that response. So that's all you need to do to get array data into a child flow. So now let's talk about how do we respond to a parent flow with array values. So in this case, maybe our child flow needs to filter this array response and return that filtered result. I'm gonna look for filter array. I'm gonna point my from parameter to the body of my JSON response. And I'm gonna look for the field I need to filter, which in this case is gonna be my state, address one state or province. I'm gonna say when that is equal to TX for Texas. Let's also run a select, cause I only want a few of these columns to return. I'm gonna point the source of my select action to the body of my filter array. And all this map is, is I'm creating a column name and telling it where the source is. So in this case, I'll say state. I'm gonna look for my state field. Let's say maybe we wanna return the name of the account as well. And let's pass the GUID or the unique identifier of this row. Let's test that and see if it's working. All right, that's a little more readable. Now we can see our data is getting filtered correctly. We're selecting the column correctly. Now let's figure out how to pass this back to our parent flow. So let's change our response to array. Now let's add the output of our select statement into our response. Now we'll run our parent flow and see what we see. So what you'll notice is the flow runs fine. There's no errors. However, if I take the response from our child flow and let's copy and paste that, what you'll find is that response is not valid JSON. So you can see we're getting a bunch of slashes added into our JSON response. And that's something Power Automate is adding because that response is supposed to be a string. I don't know why you can use an array as an input 
for a child flow, but not a response. But put simply, you can't. The solution, and what took me a long time to figure out, is you can't use the respond to power app or flow action. You have to respond with your child flow with, with a different action. So if I search for response, we're actually gonna use an HTTP response back to our parent flow. So I'm gonna put the body of our response to the output of our select action. And I'm gonna go back to one of our previous runs so I can copy and paste the output of our select action. So now just like we did at the beginning of this flow, we need to generate the schema of this response. I'm just going to paste in our response here. And now let's run our parent flow again. Now you'll notice in the response of my child flow, I have this clean JSON response. And since I've already set the schema, up, I don't have to parse this JSON again. So I can immediately reference elements in my array response. Well, thanks for watching everybody. I hope you found that helpful. I hope I saved you a little bit of time trying to figure this out. As always, please reach out with any questions and let us know how we can help you at congruentx.com. Thanks and we'll see you in the next one.